So today we are going to be doing a adjustment preload and adjustment on the right height for the coilovers, okay? You can see right here, these are my coilovers that are already installed. There's the bottom half of them. Huh? There's the bottom pin. There's the top pin. Okay. So what I'm going to do is do the preload for the fronts and then I've already done the backs but here's the thing what you want to do is have them loose and then you're going to want to tighten these up until you can't no more with your hands okay so I'm going to go ahead and spin this down and I pretty much did it all already so about right there that's pretty good. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna set the preload the size of the tool, okay? So now that that's, we are going to tighten this with the tool until it gets the size of our actual tool, which is the size of one of these. So once I actually finish the preload between there, and that will be my gap I'll finish out with. And there we have it. Okay, there we have it. You will go ahead and finish that out. And then you will tighten. Tighten this one this way. And the other one that way. To lock them up. Once they're nice and tight. We'll go to the other side. And now that you see this, you can barely spin that, okay? But before, you could do it very easily. As to this one, we'll do the same exact thing. You have your preload, okay? Tighten that by hand. That's pretty much as good as where it's going to get. Line this up with the bottom. Again, and then you're going to tighten this one up until you can get your tool in there. There she is. Okay. Now we'll go to tightening these up. And that will be your preload. Okay. I've already done the backs. Okay. I've already set the backs. Um, now, when it comes to the adjustable coilovers, there's so many things that you can adjust. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the hand tight going up the size of the tool, which I believe is like four millimeters, uh, which is more re realistically uh, 16th of an inch. Um, so, and then we also have the dampening uh, knob at the top of the strut um, that I showed you guys before. And that is going to help with the compression of the orifice inside the actual shock, okay? Um, that allows the fluid to go up and down past that orifice. And you adjust that in order to a uh, bigger orifice, which is less fluid, or a smaller orifice to where it's more fluid. Basically a softer or a harder uh, suspension ride, okay? Uh, as far as adjusting these coil levers because depending on where you live like if you live out here and uh, a lot of the roads are are trash pretty much and you got a bunch of potholes and broken roads and everything else so you're probably going to want to more on the softer side of things to kind of compensate for that if you're in a bigger city a lot of nice roads you probably won't have to worry about it so much you can tighten them up a little stiffer 
and you'll probably have just as good as a ride, okay? Um, but with that being said, it's time to do the right height. Is I'm going to go down one full inch on the fronts. And then what I'll do is I'll also make sure that from here down to here is the same exact length on both fronts. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to crack this bottom one right here. We are exactly an inch. So now it's time to crank this bad boy down. And what you will do is you will just take this. Take your tool. Do not forget to tighten that bottom nut, okay? So we'll go on to the other side, same thing, loosen this, once you have your inch, we will go ahead again and start bringing this down. For time purposes, I will go ahead and tighten this up. Okay. Once you've got your ride height down, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make sure that both sides are within reason um, between the lower and the upper plate. So right now, I'm about four right under a hair of a half so four and a hair under a half Let's check the other side this side is a little up so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and go back to the other one since i didn't give it the final tweak we'll bring it up perfect both sides are perfect. Now that I've got the right height dropped an inch again at three inches, okay? It was three inches, I took out one inch. See where I'm gonna line up at. Let's go ahead and drop the car and see how the front looks before we can move on to the back. And we are about to see. So the right height is definitely lower. So I think what's going to be the best option is to literally just drop it uh, two more inches. So let's see here. It is going to be literally, I'm going to have to just drop it a whole another two inches for the suspension to get up to where I need it to be. Um, and that's going to go for the back as well. So if we look right here, two, three, we got roughly about two and a half and about three and a quarter. So yeah. That's what we're looking at. We want to get that great right height. We need to go down two inches on each side on the front. We need to go down. And then we'll need to come down two and an eighth in the back. Eighth in the back. Two inches in the front. All right, so uh, with us doing the backs, we are, we, we did in the front an uh, inch and three quarters. In the back, we are going to do an inch and seven eighths to basically match the front right height to the back. Okay, um, or actually, we'll we'll do it. We'll do an inch and three quarters. We'll do an inch and three quarters, and that way we see where we're at. 
Um, but to be honest, I was looking at it and the back are short, right? So you have a, a little span right here. And with where I'm at, it's already at the bottom. After looking at this closely, I may end up being maxed out on here because right there about where the hole is, I literally have two and an eighth of an inch. With that being said, I may be able to drop this thing at two and an eighth inch um, and that first one, the front was supposed to be two inch to where I actually wanted it and we got two and an eighth left on the back. So it could end up being exactly where I need it to be, where I want it to be. Um, again, what we're gonna do is we are going to loosen this nut. I'm gonna take this up an inch and seven eighths and then we're gonna crank the actual shock and everything else down into the bottom, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with that. As you see right here, I am literally going to have three eighths of an inch. So we are so close to the bottom. So for time's sakes, I am going to just go ahead and tighten this down and we'll be right back. So here we are. We are all the way down to there. Again, I actually stopped it at half inch the thing kept moving on me uh so i ended up taking this down an inch and three quarters and you see how much i got left i got almost nothing left but if i do need to go down if i need to go down that two and an eighth inch like i planned on doing in the front for two inches but i did not do that i think i will have just enough play in order to max that out but it's going to be all the way down um as well as in the front but to be honest, I kind of like the way the front sits, but I also like the way uh, it's going to be like a hair over in the back, okay? Because you got to think, for me, this is my opinion, for me, there's no weight in the back, right? So there's no weight in the back. So I want it a little more compensated, a little up higher, so that way if you have passengers or something and that gets a little more weight, then it'll kind of level out the car. Now that's my thinking, that's my opinion. You guys do however you do, um, but again, that's my opinion. So what we're going to do to the other side. Again, here we are on the passenger side. We are going to loosen this up. Since I did go with the inch and three quarter on the other side, we will be doing the same over here. There it is. There's our half inch left. And our inch and three quarter. As far as actually do lowering your ride height, I know I kept the tires on in the front. Don't do that. Take your time. Take the tires off. It is so much easier. I, I had my I had my hands in here and I was rubbing the fender the whole time I was doing it. And it was a real pain. So don't do that. Just it it may have looked easy in the beginning, but as that wheel started coming up, I was having so much trouble actually. Uh, getting those adjusted properly. So just take the tires off. That's my advice. Um, that's why I've got the backs off. And plus, what I had to do was I actually had to, I am having to roll these fenders right here um, because if not, it's going to gouge into my tire. Um, again, that's my advice. Just rip the tires off. I know it's a pain, but it's going to be a lot easier. And not only that, when you get to the backs, you're going to want to take them off for sure anyways. So... Uh, again, for time's sakes, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up, and we're going to get where we're at. All right, here she is. Now, both sides are the same. We've got the same distance in between each nut, okay? Uh, from the top of the sh uh, shock down to here is the same on each side. I made sure, made sure that everything was, like, as perfect as possible. I did not want any mishaps. And I want the ride to be as, 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 as nice as I expect it to be, right? 
being a lowered vehicle. So let's go ahead and get the tires on and check this stance out. Here we go. Now I did only do an inch and three quarters, not two inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave this here. I'm gonna let this settle in and then I'll finish this video in a few days and we'll see where it's actually sitting at. I have uh, done some more research and a lot of the preload is gonna be basically you know, your standard tighten up it to where the spring is not going to be slopping on the shock. And then you do the measurement of your tool, which is four or five millimeters. But outside of that, you know, your preload is not going to stiffen up your shock itself or your spring per se. Okay, because all you're going to do is you're going to pull that shock further out of the tube. And it's not really going to do anything for you other than keep the shock in place for when you jack it up. For instance, like this, right? Um, so I'm almost at the bottom, but the point is, is that, uh, making sure that all your measurements on both sides of the car, front to back are going to be the same. Okay. Cause you don't want a shock that's a half inch higher than the other, which means the inside of the shock, right? The, the actual shock that moves up and down. And when you have the dampening setting, what you're doing is you're allowing so much fluid to flow through them holes uh, around the orifice, okay? If you have one shock that's a half inch higher than the other, that means that that tube is not going to move down as far as the other side, okay? So you're going to have a bunch of zigzag, and it, the car is going to feel way off balance. Uh, so it's very important that you guys go through each shock when you set your um, when you set your preload. Make sure both sides are, are exactly within tolerance okay and when i say within tolerance i would say within a sixteenth of an inch and, and maybe even that's being too generous but the fact is is that if you want to have less problems and you want to be able to get this thing up and going as fast as possible you're going to want to just check the measurements as you put them on and you set your ride height make sure everything checks out okay that's all i'm saying is double check everything um because i did and i found out that the fronts were actually a sixteenth off so i went ahead and got them within a 64th uh, the backs come to find out uh, was a quarter inch off um, but again that's why i checked it before i i am setting this car on the ground but here we are right now uh, this is this is going to be the stance of the car okay compared to where it was i love this stance i love the way the car looks i think it looks great okay so there's one last thing um that i found out too and that was when i was driving okay mind you i did not i, I adjusted the fronts and actually in the video i had to cut out because i didn't have enough time so i had to come back and, and finish out the backs roll the back fenders and be able to finally actually lower the back end okay um so the car is pretty much parallel to the ground and that's kind of the way i wanted it but I did notice before I got to the backs that when I was driving, it was kind of bouncy, okay? And I did do some research on that. And basically, there was a guy um, that did a little stiffer in the front and then a little, uh, a little softer in the back, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and adjust these. Um, I know a lot of people will say, you know, put it right in the middle. Uh, well, these Megan Racing coils only have 15, uh, they only have 15 settings for that so what i'm going to do is i'm probably going to go uh 10 in the front and then i'm probably going to do five in the back okay 10 in the front which is uh more toward the stiff side and then five in the back so here we have it here's my setting and i'm going to go let's see where i'm at right now one two three four five six seven eight Okay, so I was about seven. So I'm at 15 now. Uh, so we'll go back five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. 
go to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So go back. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So the fronts are adjusted to 10. And I wish I would have done a video on this. I changed the valve cover gasket and painted the valve covers, but I didn't even start. I didn't even start the channel at that point. Uh, I wish I would have done that because that was a pretty cool, interesting video. Um, so back here in the back, okay. So we've got 10 hard in the front. And we're gonna do five soft in the back, okay. So I back here is my adjusters. Okay, so we're going to go all the way soft. One, two, three, four, five. So they're both at five. There was about five anyways, but again, I didn't have the uh, fronts stiffened up. And maybe I might actually have to uh, come back off the top. Yeah, I think before I changed it, I was at like a four or five in the front. And then obviously I was like a five in the back. So maybe with me stiffening up the front, we might be okay now. Um, so I'm going to get onto the house and, uh, I'll let you guys know. All right. I know it's dark out here, but I just got home. I drive about 40 miles. And, uh, so I had a good time to actually, uh, be able to tune the shocks and you guys are not going to believe what I ended up with. Okay. Basically zero soft on the front and the back ended up being like the best ride um, and I had all kinds of different roads. I had nice highway. I had bumpy roads. You name it. I probably went over it uh, Compared to before when I changed uh, when I had the regular shocks on which I knew they were bad And I got these on now and I finally got them situated out I, This car drives a hundred times better um, There is still a mild bounce to the car So I'm gonna end up be, being between like one and three clicks on the front and the back probably more like two in the front one in the back, but that's why I'm happy with it and you know that's what it's going to come down to is you guys this preference and, and driving and how it feels and it, it may have something to do with how low I've got the car as well so keep that in mind as well uh, if you don't go as low as I do then it may not be a problem you may be able to do two three or three or four uh, and you have a pretty nice smooth ride so again uh, I wanted to finish the video here uh, guys like subscribe if you made it this far and stay tuned for the next content